So we can start with learning something about the artist. Does anyone know anything about Picasso who wants to share with me? Yes? He's like, he made, I think he, he's an abstract. He does abstract. He is abstract. Anything else? Uh, his faces don't really look like his faces. Well, like, he makes shapes into faces. Yeah, a little bit like, um, a little bit twisted, but still, you can still see it's a face. Like this one, you can see the eyes and the mouth, but it doesn't look as normal as we would expect. So Picasso is one of the most famous artists of modernism and he is the co-founder of Cubism. He likes to paint in a little strange way. He cuts some of the figures, faces, bodies, facial features, and he rearranges them. He likes to use very bright colors, what we call saturated colors. He likes to use geometrical shapes. Some of these shapes are triangular, and some of them are oval. These are all geometrical shapes. So he was influenced by the Spanish Civil War. What will the artists do if the society is in chaos? Yes? Really busy, really maybe chaotic, maybe very, very emotional pictures. Okay. Yes? Maybe what what colors? Give me some specific. Like black and stuff, and like well, it's a very like depressed state of the painting, and then light and colors are colors where it's a good painting, it's like positive. Yes, exactly. If you look at this Guernica, it is black and white, which is called monochrome, which sometimes can be used as an expression of sorrow and pain and confusion which people usually feel in war times. And Picasso has a famous saying, so although Picasso can paint really, really realistically, he chooses to paint like a child because he prefers it. So some more knowledge on the general art movement, which is called Cubism. Does anyone know anything about Cubism? Yes. Nice. It is very close. It is more um, an interpretation of the 3D environment onto a 2D surface. So the Cubists, who are, for example, Picasso, Georges Braque, and Paul Cezanne, they didn't. They weren't very satisfied with depicting reality. They thought it was boring. So they come up with this really unique way of depicting every angle in reality and smashing them all together onto a 2D canvas. Like this one, it is a combination of many, many angles and many, many geometrical shapes. So it, that's why is cubism is revolutionary because it is different to the way people always painted before. Anyone recognize any of these artists? Yes? The Mona Lisa and the Mona Lisa, not the Spanish. Who made Mona Lisa? Yeah, Da Vinci. Okay. Who made this one? Not Picasso. The artist's name is Basque. And this is an artist, Doug Catherine Button, who is also very famous for making portrait, face portrait, body portrait. That's David Bowie. And that is Salvador Dali. Can anyone tell me what all these images have in common? They're all portraits. They're all... Someone. Yes, say it louder. What did you just say? They're all... Portraits or something. Yes, so perfect. Okay. So these are all examples of portraits and they can be done with any medium. They can be either colorful or they can be monochrome. Yes? Who is that one behind the color panel? Not the one that's here. That's Raphael. No, the one below it. That's Basket. The one next to it. Salvador Dali. Okay. 
So yeah, that's just a quick refresh for your memories on what the portrait is. Today we are going to make portraits in Picasso style. That is, uh, let us take this drinking woman for example. I want you to, for this lesson, make three pencil drops in the Picasso style and we will be coloring it in the next lesson. I have everything I want you to do here. So you may want to memorize your jobs. Pay some attention to these words here because they will help you make these drops. Okay? So use geometrical shapes, you can exaggerate the faces and you can disarrange the facial features. Okay, I will put written woman here for your inspiration. So to do a face portrait, maybe I will first of all need a general shape of the face. So maybe I will just make a face shape. That's not too difficult, that's just animal kind of this. Okay? And um, what facial features do we usually use? Okay, I, I choose notes, okay? So I choose notes, but um, I want my nose to have some geometrical shapes. So it doesn't look quite normal, but you can still see it in those. Alright, um, so I will continue with the eyes. Do you see what Picasso did with the weeping women? He didn't paint the eyes on the two sides of the face, he painted them on the same side of the face. So she looks a little like a flat fish, I think, to me. You don't have to do the exactly the same thing as Picasso did, so instead of putting the two eyes on the same side, maybe I still stick to the different sides, but I make them on different levels. So I, I draw an eye here, and another one maybe a bit lower. So they're not what we usually have on our faces. And now if I want to do the mouth, where do we usually put the mouth in a realistic sense? Below the nose, maybe? So, okay. But I'm not being normal today, okay? So I'm, I may decide to put the mouth on the side of the face. And I'll also do the eyebrows according to the levels of the eyes. Now I have a really weird face, but it is still can be recognized as a face. Now what am I missing here? I may need some Ease. what was it? Ease. Okay. Yes, thank you for the reminder. I almost missed my ears. Um, where should I put my ears then? Maybe I will cross it over. Maybe I'll make my ear cross over with the line of my face and on the other side, I will make it lower. maybe with some other shapes. So now I've got basically everything, except Picasso's face is more sectioned. So you can see a lot of little lines here and they're sectioning the face into many little fragments. What am I going to do with the sectioning of my face? So as you can see, I have 
have made many geometrical shapes in my place. I have made a square, I have made many, many triangles. So that's something you can do. Make what you learned in the math class and copy it into your artwork. Does anyone have any questions?